welcome. We're here. I think that's good. A few general announcements. Uh, we have sign-up seats in the back for the nursery school and also for the church school. I'm also told we need some teachers. Deans need not apply. We need teachers. The next big item, co uh, Rally Sunday is here. It's coming up on September 12th at 10 o'clock. Please consider coming. If you do, we're keeping social distancing. Be in a group. Bring your own chair. There will be a table for those who need it. But uh, we're going to have a little fun on September 12th. Rally Sunday, keep that in mind. Once again, I'll remind you too that uh, singing, really it's best if you just hum and you hum through your mask. When we exit, we've refined that. Meg will be uh, doing the exiting after the service. And in this case, it'll be the back row first, moving to the front. So next Sunday, expect to see you all in the back rows. <laughs> and now will you join us in the spirit of togetherness and in our house as we begin the prelude on Jordan's stormy bank. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Our first hymn is Praise the Lord, His Glory Show. It's number 19 in your red hymnal in Him Behind the Mask. <laughs> Lord. 
glory show. Alleluia. Saints within his courts below. Alleluia. Angels round his throne above. Alleluia. All that see and share his love. Alleluia. Earth to heaven and heaven to earth. Alleluia. Tell his wonders, sing his worth. Alleluia. Age to age and show to show. Alleluia. Praise him, praise him evermore. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, his mercies trace. Alleluia. Praise his providence and grace. Alleluia. All that he for man hath done. Alleluia. All he sends us through his Son. Alleluia. Strings and voices, hands and hearts. Alleluia. In the concert, bear your parts. Alleluia. All that breathe your Lord adore. Alleluia. Praise him, praise him evermore. Alleluia. Join me in the prayer of invocation, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Actually, I guess it's just going to be the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Halle, halle, halle. Wasn't that good? Yeah, we love that. We love that. Okay. I have two scriptures for you this morning. Uh, I challenge the Cape Park folks to 
uh, see if they could catch any, any similarities between the passage from Isaiah and the passage from Mark. There are, there are some there, but they're very subtle. Uh, you can uh, open your Bibles that, were in, that are in your pew back, and uh, the Isaiah is on page 678 toward the front of the book. Isaiah, is prob you probably know, was a prophet, one of the greatest prophets of Israel, and he lived in the 8th century B.C., so it was a long time before Christ has come to the world. And Isaiah is an encourager. He's encouraging the people, and times are hard, and things are, seem like they're too much, too tough. He's promising us from God what we have waiting in store for us. So beginning at verse 35-4, Isaiah is speaking for God. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance. And with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool the thirsty ground bubbling springs. And our gospel lesson from Mark this morning, chapter 7. Jesus honors a Syrophoenician woman's faith. So this is a compilation of two healings that Jesus has uh, accomplished. And, and one of the things you need to know is that Jesus is doing this healing not in Israel, not in Jewish territory. He's in, he's in um, foreign territory. He's... He's living or walking among the, the Greeks and the Romans, and still the people know who Jesus is. So Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus' response, look at this. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. He's talking about he is, his being sent to the Jews first. And this woman has such great faith that she's come to him even though she's not of his faith. The children referred here are the children of the Jews, God's chosen people. And he's saying, let them eat first. And she's saying, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. 
Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After Jesus took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, and then he spit and touched the man's tongue. And he looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? Well, Lord, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our great strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, I'd like to speak to you about a very deep, profound, universal theological term. It's what I call the ick factor. Ick factor. Now let me see if I can flesh that out for you. Now we spent a month in the Gospel of John, chapter 6 particularly, and I would, let, I would rank that chapter, chapter 6 of John, I would rank that chapter as pretty high on the ick factor scale. Remember, there was a lot of talk in that chapter from Jesus about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And that kind of talk carries with it a high ick factor. The Pharisees complained because they were, as we used to say in the 70s, grossed out. Yes, they were complaining they were grossed out. What does he mean, eat his flesh and, and drink his blood? How can he say that? They grumbled and they groused at him. How can he say, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you? Now, that might be a, an 8 or a 9 or a 10 on the ick factor scale. And today's gospel, though, comes from Mark 7, and I think it, too, ranks high, maybe in the range of 5 to 8 on the ick scale, particularly the part about someone else's saliva on another person's tongue. One person's fingers stuck in another person's ears. Isn't that ooh? Ooh. Mark tells us that Jesus put his fingers in the deaf man's ears. So go ahead. I want you to um, put your fingers in each other's ears. <laughs> Don't do that, really. <laughs> Only kidding. And keep your mask on. But then Jesus, he spits on his own fingers, and he puts these fingers covered in spit on the tongue of the man who was not only deaf, but also mute. And don't be trying that out there either. Fingers and spit and incantations were common in those days, and I think they still go on now. So the crowds in the afflicted man were not really surprised, nor, for that matter, offended by what they saw Jesus doing. You know, marauding faith healers around the Decapolis were all about the show rather than the healing. Spit on tongues and fingers stuck in ears were popular features of healing exhibitions. 
So nobody in the crowd would have thought twice about Jesus doing those things. But what did surprise everybody was that after Jesus looked up to heaven, sighed deeply and said, Be opened, Ephrathah. And the man's hearing was restored. And everybody knew that healing had literally occurred because the man began to speak plainly as if he had never been afflicted at all. Now, if something like that happened to you, what do you think your first words might be? Thank you, Jesus. How can I ever repay you, Jesus? How great is our God? What a mighty God we serve. I will follow you everywhere. If I could speak at all, I hope that my gratitude and joy would be conveyed to the Savior who took time out to heal me, even me, who has my own little niche carved out on the ick factor scale. But you see, what I've learned is praise is what happens when faith finds its voice, when we've been changed. Over the past five weeks, I've been watching and listening and interacting with you as a congregation and as individuals. It's a mission I'm on. I want to learn as much about you as I can so that when we start our interim work together, that I can be a leader and a healer, a guide and a revealer, Revealing where you're really a great church or perhaps where there's some room to grow so that your next pastor will really lead you into kingdom living. And so last Sunday morning at our Kate Park service, we had a spiritually healing encounter with Jesus. And just like the crowd around the deaf man when they saw what happened, they could not stop talking about what Jesus had done. And the more Jesus wanted them to be quiet, the more loudly they proclaimed the good news. Remember, they were amazed at what happened. Praise is the result when faith finds its voice. And the passage I preached at on with Kate Park, friends, was from the letter to James to the Jews living outside of Israel. And he said, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. After the service had ended, a man whom I'll call Harry was introduced to me. He'd been in the service. And he came up to me and he said, I want to tell you my story, Pastor. And I said, please. Inside, I was hoping it was a short story. Because I have this little routine on Sundays between services. I go to Dunkin's and get a toasted cinnamon raisin bagel with cream cheese and a hot coffee. And I come back to Cape Park and people watch and boat watch. And I was really looking forward to, to doing that. So when Harry was sharing his story, for a brief moment I had to chastise myself for thinking in such a moment about a bagel. But that's who we are as human beings, is it not? Donna, I said to myself in my head, do not, did you not just preach to these folks that everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger? And I was glad for that spiritual correction. But it, it is what happened next that showed me who you the first congregational church of Wolfboe really are. 
And I was amazed. As others around Harry and me were leaving, several individuals came up at a, one at a time, and one person had a bunch of folded money clasped in his hand, and he said to Harry, this is all the money we have here with us right now, but we want you to have it. And he pressed the money into Harry's hand. And then one of our deacons came up to Harry bearing a cup of hot coffee and a warm pastry. And the deacon gave it to him. Another person said, I am going home to look for a warm coat for you. If you're not here when I get back, I'll leave the coat on that signpost over there for you to take it and be warm. And then another person came and handed Harry the name, address, and phone number of Wolfboro's assistance office. And as I watched the outpouring of this Christian love and healing, a love which always brings healing and an opening up to God with it, I was the one who was opening up. Such, I tell you, it's such a gift to witness all of you, each in your own way, sharing with Harry in such helpful healing ways because I could see who you are in Christ. I could see who you are in Christ. There was love and there was light and there was healing and true caring for this man. And I was so impressed by your faith as it was proclaimed with action, with loving kindness. There was no incantation. You just came. As I realized, I was no longer looking for a bagel or coffee because I had been taken up into that that moment, and God was revealing part of who you are to me so that I could lead you. As Harry's story went on and on, I wanted to give him my full attention, but I was getting uncomfortable standing there, and I really needed to sit down. But I said nothing. And I thought about witnessing the scene of loving kindness last week a hundred times. What was absolutely revealed to me about you is this. It didn't matter what the ick factor was. I heard compassion in your voices, saw sincerity in your actions. I could see the love of God in your eyes as you cared for him. And I think I was as blown away as the crowd in the Decapolis that day. Jesus healed the deaf and dumb man. Look, you are doing all things well, I say to you. Look, and I praise God for sending me here to take this faith journey with you together. Jesus told the crowd to say nothing about the healing of the deaf, mute man, how he spoke plainly, immediately. Say nothing. So why am I telling you this story now? In that 30 minutes of standing with Harry, God opened my eyes and my ears and my heart. God showed me who you are and when you are opened up to help and serve someone who needs to receive the love of Christ, even when it's in the form of a hot cup of coffee on a chilly morning by the lake. Bible stories 
often have some ick factors in them. But the story of you, which played out at Cape Park last Sunday, is filled with a grace factor that comes by faith that has been placed in us by none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus, friends, is the fulfillment of all that Isaiah prophesied centuries before Christ. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the, will the lame leap like a deer and a mute, the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool the thirsty ground bubbling springs. To eat Christ's body and to drink his blood as we are about to do is the story of resurrection that lives within those who come to his table just as they are over and over and over again till all people begin opening up and seeing the Lord in the faces of each and every person who comes near as I saw in you. Amen. Lord, let us seek you out in each other. Lord, let us seek you out for each other. Lord, let us seek you out in community. Lord, teach us who to be. Teach us who to be together. Hey. <clears throat> this is the time where we can share our celebrations and our concerns with one another. Um, Meg, are you going to get the mic? Um, if you don't want to use the mic, then I just ask you to lower your mask a little bit because I'm having a hard time hearing you behind the mask. Who has something to share? Wendy. So we'd, uh, Bernie and I would like to um, be in thanksgiving for our dear friends, our longtime friends from Omaha, Paul and Mary, to be here with us and to um, help us celebrate our adventure here in New Hampshire. And they came to make sure we were okay. <laughs> and uh, we're having a great time. So we're really thankful for that. Thank God for friends. Someone else? Meg? Um, for all the parents who are sending their kids off to school this week, yes. for the stress and anxiety that's, that's going on. Mm -hmm. Yvonne? Uh, I just got word that my uh, granddaughter, my California granddaughter, Kendall, uh, is expecting. This will be her, well, she had, she lost two and then had a very difficult uh, first baby uh, two years ago, uh, almost two years ago, and she's expecting a little girl uh, pretty soon, and they're, they're both heavy, healthy, the, uh, the, baby and her are both healthy so things are looking really good Thank yes you. praise God for that 
Dave. Thankfulness for all those in the healthcare profession, the doctors, the nurses, the aides, the cleaning staff, who are working so diligently in very difficult times and under strange conditions. We do want to remember Joan Jonkus as her husband's service was on Friday at the Veterans Cemetery. And so I hope you'll be in touch with her. Yes. Bernie. We, um, we saw and, and heard about the, uh, the terrible suffering of people on, you know, the, on the East Coast from the storm the other day. And it, it's hard to imagine what it would be like for those folks that lost their lives in their car or in their apartment. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they and, and their, certainly their families who survived them, probably wondering where, where God is at, at, at time of suffering and destruction like that. And, and I'd like to ask for, that we pray for, that God will give those folks some comfort and, uh, and confidence that, that he is uh, with, with us all who suffer in, in destruction like that, especially from nature. And um, it's, it's just hard to comprehend what that must have been like. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be a real test of faith and uh, like to uh, ask that we all keep them in our prayers. Thank you, Bernie. I wish more kids will come to school. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? More kids will come to. He's hoping more kids will come to church. Yes. 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 <laughs> you go to the head of the class, right? <laughs> Anyone else? Let's be together in prayer. Well, Lord, it's been, it's been quite a week. And as Bernie said, we are aware of so many people in the Northeast and in the South who have suffered great losses, even loss of loved ones or their own lives. And Lord, we just don't know what to say. And we wonder, why did you let this happen? Why? But there is no answer that's easy to hear. Other than this. You were with those people as they came through the storm. And those who were, who were drowning and the police officer who was swept away in a, his cruiser. Lord, we can't explain why that happens, and we want to blame you. But it is comforting to know, Lord, that you were with these people, our brothers and sisters, and that they are safe now with you. Maybe someday in the by and by we'll understand. You've heard the names and situations brought forth by your people in this congregation. We know you have heard and we pray that in your heart and with your hands we will find ways to minister to people, dear, dear friends and those who are strangers, the ones we can't see and the ones we can. For it is for all of us that Christ, your Son, went 
to the cross where he suffered and he bled and he died for us. That we who hunger and thirst for him shall have life in us always. That he is the one who has saved us all. Untie our tongues, Lord, open our ears and hearts that we may see Jesus on the sidewalk, driving on the road, behind the counter at the store. Let prayer and praise come from us as we look at that person and know that they too have much care on their hearts and minds. And we bless them with your word, Jesus. Amen. I think by now we're used to having the uh, offering baskets at the rear of the sanctuary, and I hope that you will take the opportunity to contribute to the ongoing needs and functions of this congregation and this, this church building. We have much to do, and your every penny helps. So would you pray with me as we dedicate our offering? God of new life, out of the abundance of our lives, we offer these gifts to you. Through your blessing and our willingness to share, may these offerings come a source for hope and love in this church family and in the community beyond us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. love of God as shown to us in Christ Jesus. Come not because you must, but because you may. Come just as you are and receive the gifts of God that are for the people of God. Let us confess our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Sisters and brothers, in the words of the psalmist, let us ask for the forgiveness we desire. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we know, know that, that you, you love us and that, and that you call us, us to fullness of life. life. But around us and within us, we, we see the, the brokenness of the world and of our ways. Our successes leave us empty. 
Our progress does not satisfy. Our prosperous land is not the promised land of our longing. Forgive our willful neglect of your word, our insensitivity to the needs of others, and our failure to feed the spirit that is within us. Friends, Almighty God has forgiven us all our sins and has promised to bring us to the life everlasting. Let the people say amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In the company of all who hunger for spiritual food, I invite you to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of the life-giving bread and cup. Let us pray. Holy God, our loving creator, close to us as breathing and as vast as the Father star, we thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life for all people of faith in every generation who have been given, given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as a, our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for the calling forth of your church for its mission in the world. Gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. Merciful God, as brothers and sisters in faith, we now recall anew these words and acts of Jesus Christ. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to all the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And Jesus took a cup and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And this is the cup of blessing. Drink this, for it is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Friends, all things are now ready. So come and taste how gracious our Lord is. You may receive the bread and the cup. with me the prayer of thanksgiving we give, we give you thanks, thanks almighty, almighty god, god 
that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now won't you tap your feet with me? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Can you snap between the beats? Like oh. this. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Good. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. That's right, get the snap in between. One, two, Three and Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Thank you, Andy. Friends, as you go on your way, remember that you go in one another's care, that your ministry is before you to be the hope and to be the peace and the love that God so intends for our world. And may God be with us all till we meet again. Let the people of God say amen. Amen.